what is good. Um, I sat down, and uh, this <coughs> is the first thing I saw. This came out one year ago. Uh, one one day. Hold on. How? Hold on. I'm tripping. How am I supposed to say this shit? This came out tomorrow. It'll be two years that this 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 shit happened. May nineteenth, two thousand nineteen. It is now May eighteenth, two thousand twenty one. Two years ago tomorrow, this motherfucking interview happened. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, what is this? Long live Palestine. That was two years ago too. See what was it? Two years ago, these motherfuckers was going through the same like. It's never ending. It's never ending, dog. Israel, Palestine, it'll be fucking. It's never ending, dog. I, I can't wait to hear this. Low key destroys CNN propaganda on Israel. This should be fun. Let's go. Well, we uh, took you to Eurovision at the uh, top of this hour, and now I want to uh, take you to what you could call. The anti-Eurovision, that's right. In response to the song competition's controversial setting of Israel this year, pro-Palestinian activists held a counter-performance dubbed Global Vision that was streamed from cities across the world. Okay, it's like a, a concert thing. That's one of the performers, British Iraqi rapper... Loki, joining me now from British London. Iraq. You see, I thought his, I thought his ancestors was from Iraq. Um, sir, so why? Hi, Becky. How are you doing? Firstly, we um actually were streaming to thirty-five thousand people worldwide. Now that's more mm. than uh, the tickets that were actually sold for the Eurovision. And in the words of the head of the Israeli Broadcasting Services. Israel has been the first country in 64-year history of the Eurovision that was not able to fund it itself. It relied on the broadcasting services to do it. We know that there was not a spike in tourism, and we know that also the Eurovision village itself was on the remains of a Menshia, um, a Palestinian village of Yaffa that was deleted from existence in the Nakba of 1948. So we saw that Israel is in a situation where it violates more UN resolutions and more international law than any other country, but yet seems sanction proof. So for that reason, upon inspiration from the BDS campaign in South Africa, upon the advice of former US President Jimmy Carter, who defines Israel as an apartheid state, of uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, right. Nobel Peace Prize winner. Yep. Oh, the boy says, all right. Divestment sanctions all right. Is a all right. We don't want to hear none of that shit, dog. No. <laughs> she says, all right. All right. All right. You we cut that shit. The job was sort of done for you by Madonna, was it not, last night? And by uh, the, uh, the uh, band representing Iceland. I mean, the Eurovision say this isn't about politics, but it was last night. Oh. Well, bruh. You ain't gonna breathe. Look. Hold up. We would have preferred, preferred that uh, Madonna didn't cross the picket line, but in fact, the fact that she had to have a Palestinian flag on stage is a testament to the success of our campaign and also is a testament to the fact that Israel cannot leave um, 12.5 million people. So the concert was held in Israel. Worldwide population in a state of hauntology, in a state of constant anticipation for more just future, future right hauntology in a state of constant anticipation for more just futures. Also, the fact that the Icelandic team um, felt the need to show the Palestinian flag as well. Again, we would have preferred they did not cross the picket line. Um, and these aesthetic gestures um, are limited. But at the same time, I would say they bear <laughs> testament to our success. Oh. Let's talk about the politics uh, for uh, the says... region. Um, we what? are promised the details of a peace plan from the U.S. president's uh, son-in-law, Jared Kushner. We don't have the details as of yet. Um, what you looking at, Loki? Those who say uh, this plan will simply uh, maneuver out the Palestinians effectively, and that the many countries from from the region that we are in 
uh, in an axis with the US and Israel are sort of forging ahead at whatever leaving the Palestinians behind. What's your sense? <laughs> Well, um, paragraph 6, article 49 <laughs> just, of uh, just the Geneva Convention Fuck em. Um, outlaws the moving of citizens of an occupying power from inside that power to the state it occupies. Israel has built up across the peace process um, uh, illegal settlers in the West Bank that number almost 600,000 people. They have access to over 70% of the clean water in the West Bank. We have seen the peace process as a sub. I bet this lady. I bet this lady when she. Uh, I, I mean, I, I bet she doesn't know low key from a hole in the motherfucking wall. But secondly, like she probably gets. They probably told her, her producer said, oh yeah, we're gonna interview this rapper next segment. She's like, oh, perfect. This is gonna be easy. I'm just gonna ask him some crazy. I'm just gonna ask him a couple, cra a couple questions. He ain't gonna have nothing to motherfucking say. And we just gonna run this shit. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna run him out the motherfucking building. Like, you know what I'm saying? But low key gonna <laughs> that. Yes, I'm a rapper, but I got shit. I got. Refuge for the continued colonization of Palestinian land and ethnic cleansing of Palestinian people from their homeland. Um, if you look at the law even within Israel, yes, there are 1.5 million Palestinians who have Israeli citizenship that have the right to participate in elections, as do, I might remind you, the illegal settlers in the West Bank, by the way. However, those people, those Palestinians within Israel, what they have is Israeli citizenship. They don't have nationality. Their nationality sure. is defined as Arab. There is a Jewish nationality. Yeah. There is a Russian nationality. There is a Syrian nationality. Legal rights group Adala have identified over 50 laws within Israel that enshrine inequality between Jews and Arabs. Now, yeah. Ehud Barak said it um, clearly, Israel can either be non-democratic or it can be, um, uh, it's either racism or democracy. And, and that's a clear choice for us. It's not a difference between Jews okay. and Palestinians. It's a difference between those that believe in the equality of all and those that believe in the supremacy of some. Woo! Okay. Yes, sir. Let's listen to that again. Let's listen to that again. Um, oh, uh, sorry, clearly, 20 seconds. Israel can either be non-democratic or it can be... Um, uh, it's either racism or democracy. And, and that's a clear choice for us. It's not a difference between Jews okay. and Palestinians. It's a difference between those that believe in the equality of all and those that believe in the supremacy of some. Loki, thank you. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Your, uh, live stream type of Bethlehem, Dublin, as well as London last night, your view will be considered by some extremely controversial. They are. Oh, I'm telling you, bro. She had no fucking earthly idea what she was getting into when she got into this interview with Low Key. I promise you that. During the, she went, she went, they went to commercial break. Low Key left. She went to her producer. She's like, "What in the fuck? You what in the fuck? Did you can you not inform me that I am talking to a motherfucking? Not I'm not just talking to some rapper. I'm just talking not talking to like some motherfucking off the motherfucking street. I'm not talking." I'm talking to a motherfucker, a motherfucker that is educated. Okay, that was fun. Um, let's keep it moving. Let's go. Uh, let's get back to the music, goddamn. Um, but that was fun, though. Be good out there. We get back to the music right now. <laughs> 